just want to pray right now to uh, just dedicate this program to the Lord. And then after the prayer, we're going to have, uh, um, I think, one of our guests that's going to really uh, sing to us. And then I'm praying that uh, we, we have a good time today. Please, let's bow our heads to pray. Father, we give you praise. We thank you for this great opportunity given unto us to be here today. We just ask that you take control. Thank you for the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. And thank you for calling all of us together at such a time as this and for our nation and different nations where we're coming from. Take all the glory in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so we are going to um, have an uh, introduction of our panelists. I think uh, we're very grateful that everybody's here. Um, so we, the first panelist we have today is um, um, Annette Morales. We have uh, uh, not the nurse uh, practitioner, Annette Morales, and uh, she's originally from New Jersey. And I'm going to read a little bio. Thank you so much, Annette. Thank you. Uh, Annette Morales is an advanced practice nurse who comes with 14 years of experience in the field, in the fields of emergency nursing, uh, medicine, primary care, and education. She's passionate about serving the very community she was born and raised in. In addition to caring for, the, for her family and patients, she leads a ministry for Christian medical professionals that are dedicated to empowering and equipping others to keep Jesus at the center of their practice. Can we give it up for Annette, please? Let's give it up. And thank you so very much for being on this uh, panel. On the second panelist, we have this uh, Dr. Michael Igwe from Arizona. Dr. Michael Michael Igwe from Arizona. Dr. Michael, Dr. Igwe is the president of Eagles Network International a non-profit organization focused on providing cross-generational empowerment, free medical care, food and clothing to widows, orphans, and the less privileged. He's a kingdom influencer who enjoys helping other people discover their purpose, maximize their gift, and express excellence. He is a respected medical doctor who has been practicing medicine for years in the United States of America, where he is also a clinical assistant professor of medicine at Midwestern University, Arizona College of Medicine, and also the director of hospital medicine for SMG, that's Mountain Vista Medical Center. He is also the CEO of Royalty Healthcare USA. Dr. Igwe is a mentor to many young people and speaks at conferences. He believes in the power of prayers and the lifestyle of worship. It's my privilege to have Dr. Igwe as one of the panelists. Let's give it up, Dr. Igwe. Thank you so very much. Um, additionally, we're going to have our third panelist introduced. Dr. Evely, I'm, I'm sorry the way I call it, Dr. Evely Liner. He's a respected medical doctor who has been practicing medicine for seven years in Indonesia. Wow, that's beautiful. She's a member of the Asian Medical Student Association Alumni Club, and she's a member of the Prayer with Heroes Medical Fellowship. Dr. Evelina Model is give thanks in all circumstances and our favorite Bible verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 13 through 4, uh, 13, 4 to 7. I mean, that's that's a, a, a very uh, verse in the Bible that I love, which is the verse on love. Let's put our hands together to just uh, welcome Dr. Evelina. We're very grateful to have you. Uh, I've been doing, uh, uh, working with some friends in uh, Indonesia, and uh, we've been able to be a blessing to that great, great nation that's really uh, overturning the kingdom of darkness. And uh, it's just a privilege to uh, meet with you. 
and I'm going to have, uh, well, without much ado, I'm going to have Dr. Uh, Evelina to, I'm uh, sorry, I'm going to have um, uh, Theodora Baningo, uh, that's from the uh, United Kingdom, uh, to pray for students around the world. But before she prays, let me uh, give a little backdrop about Theodora. Theodora is a general practice trainee from the United Kingdom. She still wants a Christian medics group. And uh, according to what I have here, we're creating an atmosphere, an environment where Christians in medicine can fellowship with God and with one another, edify, teach, strengthen, and encourage one another to shine their God-given light in their respective fields. The Christian medics group is moving forward to live out the vision God has given for the organization with the help of the Holy Spirit. Theodore Baningo, please lead us in prayer this afternoon or evening on your own hand there in UK. God bless you richly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks everyone. Um, welcome this evening. So let's just say a prayer to start our meeting. Father, we thank you for this meeting. We thank you for the opportunity to gather. We know you're here in our midst for where two or three are gathered in your name. We know you're there amongst them. So we know you're here. We just want to acknowledge your presence. We want to give you all the glory. We want to give you all the praise. We want to give you all the thanks for the opportunity to gather together. Father, we commit this meeting into your holy hands. We pray that all we will hear, all we will be, all that will be said today will be inspired by your Holy Spirit. We pray for the free move of your Holy Spirit amongst us and within us this evening. Father, we pray that your will be done amongst us this evening or this afternoon in Jesus' name. But I also want to commit all the healthcare professionals who have gathered here together in your name that we know we're all facing challenging times around the world in our jobs. But we thank you for the, the great opportunity to serve you in the field of medicine. We thank you because we know we are strategically placed to do your will at such a time as this. But I will pray that your Holy Spirit will empower each and every one of us to live out your will in whatever place you have placed us to serve at this time in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for empowerment, we pray for boldness, we pray for courage. But then we just want to pray this Psalm 91 upon everyone who's gathered here today. We pray that your wings will guide and protect us. Your wings will cover us from all evil and all harm. Father, we pray that no matter how many fall at our left hand or our right hand, that none of it will come near us. We will only see from a distance the reward of the wicked. It will not come around our families. It will not come around our households. It will not come around us. Father, we pray for your divine protection. We pray for grace to live with a constant awareness of your presence. We pray for grace to be sensitive to the, to the leadership of your Holy Spirit and for courage to follow as we're led to do. Thank you, Father, for this meeting tonight. Thank you because we know your will will be done. We pray against all distractions. We pray against any disruption. We pray that your will alone will occur here tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you very much. We believe God has answered our prayers. Um, it's coming from our hearts and uh, out of all of our busy schedule, we all gather together. And I believe God is not only a God that hears prayers, He's also the God that answers prayers. We thank God for that uh, wonderful prayer. Also, I, I, I forgot to introduce our third panelist, which is Dr. Sakulanda from Zambia. Dr. Sakulanda from Zambia. Almost everywhere at this day, that's where everybody came from. And so we are glad to have you and we bless the Lord for you. Right now, we're going to have prayers for healthcare professionals. You know, yourself and your family, 
and the great things you do, the wonderful things you're doing, and those who are coming up, who are students, who are following your part, we are really very grateful. And, uh, you know, um, I think the best way we can, the best thing we can do for uh, all of our healthcare folks right now, which we've been doing for a long time, is to lift them up before the Lord and just bless God on their behalf. Not even just for COVID, even post COVID um, event and all this trauma thing. Because sometimes uh, the helper also need help. You know, and sometimes we forget that that's those that are on the front line also, they need comfort, they need encouragement, they need uh, prayers. And so I'm going to have, um, uh, I'm going to have, um, uh, I think, I, I'm, I'll have Dr. Eve Liner to please lead us in prayer for healthcare professionals all around the world, you know, and uh, it doesn't matter. Just got to, to keep them, just got to protect and preserve them and also preserve their family because, you know, most folk they didn't even have a lot of time or ability to balance or manage things with their family, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, at the expense of serving other people. And so I want to, I want uh, Dr. Evelina, Evelina, I'm sorry, to please lead us in prayer. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me start this uh, short prayer with uh, worship. Uh, let's sing together. Jesus, lover of my soul, Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me from the miry clay. You set my feet upon the rock, and now I know I love you. I need you. Through my fault may fall, I never let you go. My Savior, my closest friend, I will worship you until the very end. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you for today that we all are alive, healthy, and safe. We thank you for your grace, your protection, and provision. We thank you for the freedom to worship you. We thank you for the opportunity to have this online fellowship together with others. Forgive us for whatever sins that we may have done. Sanctify us to come to your holy presence. The afternoon, this afternoon, we come together to pray for all healthcare professionals, especially who join this Zoom fellowship. This COVID pandemic has brought fears and struggles to most people around the world, including healthcare professionals. But we believe that you are in control of everything. We believe you have bigger plans towards this pandemic, that your name will be glorified and many souls will come to know Jesus and accept Jesus as their saviors. Uh, we pray that you give us strength, faith, and hope to serve the patient with your love and grace. In you, we find, we find inner peace. Give us heart to not only care about our patient's physical recovery, but moreover, their spiritual restoration. Use us to be your witness so that many patients would know about Jesus and be safe. We surrender all of our doubts, fear, worries to you. We ask for your guidance, protection, your divine immune. Please protect us and our families too. As Psalm 23, verse 1 to 4 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Yes, Lord, even though we walk through the shadow of death, the shadow of death, we believe there will not be a shadow without light, so that we believe whatever darkness we are going through right now, you, the light of our lives, are with us. This too shall pass. We want to focus on you. 
the source of light so that we won't see the shadow of our lives anymore. Thank you for these comforting promises of yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen and amen and amen and amen. From the very depth of our heart, we believe the Lord Jesus has had us and is we, we are all dwelling under the shadow of his wings. And as we uh, endeavor to use our knowledge to take care of others, believing that the Lord who is our great shepherd, the chief shepherd, the wonderful shepherd, he will keep all of us. And uh, many that are watching, that are on this line right now, the Zoom, believing God, there are things in your heart, things in your life that personally, you yourself, you're trusting God for. Some of them defies human uh, answers or human help. I'm praying that this forum will be a forum through which God will answer your, 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 your needs, you know, a spiritual, emotional strength, you know, any need you have for your family members or to make your life complete. Don't let's forget that the Bible says these things are right unto you, that your joy may be full god wants us to walk in the fullness of joy which is the key principal thing for a wonderful life so i just want to thank god for that prayer i know that the god we serve has answered all of our prayers now we're going to go to the real deal right now and uh, that is some of the questions that we have here and uh, i'm going to be throwing it out to our panelists don't let's forget that we have three panelists who's going to be contributing and to, uh, and if you have any other question please you can by way of chat send in your question and then we will timely look into that and be able to answer it now the first question i have and i'm going to throw that out to uh dr michael the first question i have here is as an instrument of hope to the people that you encounter you are able to see how much they are depending on you to solve any health related concerns i mean folk just coming and I, I, they're just sitting down on the doctor like you know you are just a lifeline you know and <laughs> they, they, they 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 trust it how do you feel when you see the impact you've made in the lives of your patient and i want you not just to look at it from uh, the negative, the positive side alone, I also want you to look at it, maybe a little percentage of the negative side, you know, uh, please go ahead. All right, God bless you, sir. Thank you for, for having me. This is uh, amazing. Um, I'll answer this question straight away. I believe strongly, strongly in my spirit, um, that people who work in healthcare are not just doing it because it's a profession. I believe it's a calling. I believe that we are instruments in the hands of God. And anybody who's a doctor and nurse or any, any capacity in a hospital that does not understand um, that you are an instrument of God will miss out in the timing of God. Will miss out in what God is doing. You know, the Bible says that it's him that is in us, but to will and to do. Anytime we show up in the hospital, we have become expressions of Jehovah. We have become manifestations. I mean, God is not going to physically come here and work any longer. He's given us the power. He's given us the ability. He's given us the knowledge. And anytime we show up, we are literally miracle seeds that God wants to plant in our patients, in our co-workers. My experience is patients look up to you. Anytime someone is sick, they are desperate. They are open. There can never be a much more strategic moment for the gospel as a time like this. So I believe strongly that anybody that is filled with the Holy Spirit and you are in the health sector at this time, the onus of evangelism is on you. The burden of evangelism is on you. Because there's something about how God allows certain things to happen so that he can manifest his people. The Bible says the whole creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. And I believe this is that time. I, I don't think God sends diseases, but I believe that he allowed diseases so that his sons can be manifested. So I believe that 
as a physician, as a nurse, as a certified nurse assistant, as a radiologist, you are God's atomic bomb in the healthcare system all over the world. When you show up, cancer disappears. When you show up, COVID goes away. I'm telling you my personal experiences. There are people that we've said in the hospital where I work, you are terminal. We're going to take you off life support. And I'll go to them and say, do you believe that Jesus is Lord? It's not a lot of religion. It's not a lot of theories. Do you just believe that Jesus is Lord? So what, what am I trying to say? We are instruments of hope. The signs and wonders that the Bible talked about, this is that time. These are the days that the prophets prophesied about. The, the Bible says the people shall be willing in the days of his power. These are the days. So we bring hope, we bring a life. You know, we can walk into a situation and we can command dead kidneys to come back to life. We can command failing hearts to come back to life. So it is beyond medical knowledge. Medical knowledge is amazing. I mean, I mean God honors excellence. God honors knowledge, but it's beyond it. We have an advantage. The Bible says, they that know their God shall be strong. Beyond being strong and being a, a healthcare worker, it is that season of exploit. These are my convictions. This is what I go into the hospital every morning believing. So we bring hope. When people look at us, um, in this COVID era, one of our, our top intensive care unit doctors died. So it's beyond knowledge. Knowledge is not able to save. There has to be an element of the Spirit of God poured on this thing. And when you show up, and you're not ashamed to say, I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I am born of the Spirit. I have the divine nature of out of me flows the rivers of living waters. These people cannot resist you. I'm telling you, there is no, there's no issue of is it religious or not religious. It's evidence. When there is evidence, argument disappears out of the room. Science even gets out of the door. So yes, we, we bring hope. And people, when we mix what we have, with the very nature of Christ. I have never seen any resistance. In this COVID era, people were begging, doctor, come and pray for us. Even our colleagues, doctor, come and pray for us. I I'll just stop there so that someone else can opine. Wow, thank you so very much. Uh, um, <clears throat> we are very grateful, Dr. Michael. That's a very powerful input. Uh, ability to jump in into the timing that we're living in and uh, not waiting for uh any um uh you know any entrance or following some uh uh abnormal practice you know in terms of you know this person is going jesus we need to give to him briefly before he goes uh, i i want to chip in something we were sometimes long time ago we were in the country it's an Afri african country and uh, it's a predominantly muslim area and there is no healthcare system wherever we saw this woman. And, uh, you know, she was almost about 80 something years old. And um, I think she has a uh, blood cancer. And so, and uh, we, we thank God for a whole lot of uh, manifestations in times of prayer and all those healing and whatever it is. So, uh, lay hands on the woman, trusting for healing. She was in terrible pain and nothing, nothing was being done. I mean, we can't see any manifestations. She was in pain. And, and then, uh, then we, we're in a hurry to leave, you know, and coming back tomorrow to bring some of spe uh, the specialists we have in town who will be staying with us, local doctors to see what they can do. And then the Holy Spirit laid on my heart to just lead that woman in prayer, hmm. you know. So, I mean, it was like unconventional. So, well, we all joined hands together in a very little art hmm. where there was smoke. She, she did not even she did not even know who Jesus was because there was no single church in that place, not even a mosque. It's all, you know, predominantly animist and, uh, you know, so, but she she received Jesus Christ after a lot of, um, you know, explanation. Are you talking about Coca-Cola? Because she thought that that's what we brought. And so, and then she, she got saved. So we left wow. after about 30 minutes of discussion. Now, the following day, we came with a team to, all, to help other people in the in the village, in the area, in the community. And when we arrived, you know, she already died. So 
it really gives <clears throat> a lot of joy mm-hmm. that a soul that you cannot compare to the whole world mm-hmm. was saved. You know, having having a picture of of heaven, like you know, she's now in heaven, and then we we are instrumental to that mm-hmm. salvation. What a very powerful uh, uh, that uh, Dr. Michael has brought up. Now I'm going to also uh, quickly ask. Uh, uh, Dr. A.N.P. Annette, to please contribute uh, whatever you want to say to that question. Um, please uh, jump in, please. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes. Hear you. Awesome. Just have to say that everything Dr. Michael said was amazing and totally on point and so encouraging. It's so nice to see you guys and it's so nice to be here thank you for having me um i just want to reiterate um the importance of hosting the presence in your workplace um i really believe that that is what saved me during this pandemic i decided to posture myself immediately from the start and um i was standing in expectation of miracles And I was standing in expectation of victory because that is what our God is in the business of. You know, I have a young son, he's 12 years old. I wanted early on for him to see an example of what it looks like to face these things head on. But with fear in my heart, because there was fear in my heart, right? I was anxious some days, but I wanted him to remember when he looked back on this, when he was facing the COVID-19 of his own, whatever that will look like in his day, you know, that my mom was standing in posture of miracle and expectation and of victory. And that's the posture that I want to, you know, um, go into, into these experiences. Um, What that looked like for me was simply just claiming holy ground every time I walked into work. Every step that I took, I said, Lord, this is yours, and this is yours, and this is yours, and this room is yours, and this room is yours. And disease had no authority there. The enemy had no authority there. Our father says that his will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And in heaven, there is no disease and there is no illness. I knew that he only had good things, health and restoration for us. And as long as I kept my eye on that, as long as I focused on that, he was gonna see me through. Thank you very much. I mean, we, we, ma- we married this together. I mean, we, we're on a good track. I love uh, the way he started. It must be a calling, a calling. It has to be a calling, you know, and uh, we need to verify that and feel that and make sure that we are called into it. You see, anything you are called to do, you're not pushed, you're not first, you know, uh, it, it has nothing to do with uh, uh, remuneration. That's part of it too. But you know, God is the rewarder. And you marry that together with um, uh, what my sister just said about carrying God's presence. Mm. Oh, Jesus um, um, Almighty. You know, we become the carrier of his presence. Mm-hmm. You know, God's just using our scripture, says Christ in me, the hope of glory. He said in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. I have not what Psalms 114 said, that when Israel moved, they are carriers of his presence so you're in, in the world you're in the theater you're just carrying his presence and it's a place where you might not even be able to preach mm. you know you might not be able to say the bible says because of your colleagues who don't believe but you know your touch that hand is the hand of jesus that eyes is the eyes of jesus that diagnosis prognosis coming out of you is just coming from jesus what a marvelous uh contribution i don't know maybe um uh Dr. Uh, Evelina, maybe she has something to contribute to this before we jump to another question. Please feel free. Dr. Larissa, yeah, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I agree with Dr. Michael and Dr. Annette Morales. Yeah. When uh, maybe I, uh, my, I, my English is not really fluent. I hope you all understand me. Uh, yeah, I think through this pandemic, uh, people around me, some of them uh, who already know Jesus before, uh, when they get through struggles, uh, some of them 
uh, feel disappointed and they left Jesus unfortunately but many of others also come to Jesus and we have to thank God we are we have the privilege uh, as being a healthcare professionals to speak more about Jesus uh, to pray for our patient as you know uh, in my country uh, I think also in all country uh, uh, throughout this pandemic um, uh, patients at hospital COVID or non-COVID they are all in fears much more fear than before and there will be no visitor also even their family cannot visit them only video call if possible so they feel the patient feel alone the family also struggles with fear and doubt and that is the chance for us uh, to pray for them to speak uh, about Jesus uh, for them and I also uh, thank God because uh, this happened to me uh, some of patients uh, I got the chance to pray for them pray with them and I tell about Jesus to them and yeah uh, many of them come to Jesus or maybe they have already received Jesus but they are in doubt and they are in struggle they are uh, they feel strength then and after that I also feel strengthened by their testimony too and as for me uh, I was a patient too I was in severe major uh, severe depression major depressive dis- disorder before and by the grace of God uh, I'm healed uh, and at that time I asked God why why this have to happen to me and this happened before the pandemic and uh, now I know why you know that through this pandemic uh, many people got depressed uh, as we know uh, yesterday a few days before we commemorate about uh, world uh, suicide, suicide day right yeah uh, we know that many people even even they have already heard about Jesus uh, their faith uh, they questioning their faith and many people also get depressed uh, and I have been through that depression and I feel them and I also uh, that give me uh, really really uh, the patient to to help them as Jesus has helped me and uh, yeah I believe that this pandemic is a uh, in God's control right, uh, right uh, before uh, it is said that not not God who sent this disease but he allows this for his greater plan that so that uh, all people around the world can know about Jesus we know if you you know uh, through this pandemic everything got online in my country school online uh, uh, church online and everything online but because of everything online you know internet in my country uh, before only in big cities in small or villages it's hard to get internet but now the government building internet everywhere and that that means that uh, the gospel can be shared more and more to toward uh, small cities and villages at my country and a lot of people come to know Jesus and accept Jesus as their savior. So this is really a blessing. And also uh, for divine protection, I have a testimony. Uh, I have worked in the hospital at the emergency also for uh, for quiet from the start of this pandemic. And at the start of the pandemic, we don't really know about this virus and the protection. Uh, it's not really good uh, and I and I've ever um, splashed with the droplet from a patient that I uh, do the uh, CPR and a few days later it comes out that the patient is COVID positive and uh, but you know till now I have been uh, swept uh, checked for the COVID for eight times and all the results are negative 
So even though also uh, my colleague, some of my colleague is COVID positive and getting getting uh, killed, uh, but I'm amazed that even though every day I got uh, I got patients with COVID and sometimes I I get close close contact with them, uh, but God protects me and also protect uh, my family. So. I believe that we, if we do uh, whatever our calling uh, to serve God, to focus on God, to glorify Him, not focus on ourselves, not focus on our own problem, we pray for others, we pray for them. Uh, yeah, God always protect us. Uh, there is uh, one thing uh, that my friends share with me, uh, the recipe of joy. G, Jesus first, O, other second, Y, yourself last. If you want to have joy in this uh, pandemic, in this um, struggles, yeah, the only way is Jesus. Put Jesus first, other second, and yourself last. Thank you. Wow, what a testimony. Yes, what a testimony. We give God all the praise for that personal testimony. And uh, there's just a lot of uh, 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 questions and clarifications and praises that is just coming from your response. I want to give your praise. And uh, uh, Dr. Michael, she, she said something about fear. And, uh, you know, um, we all know uh, a natural response, you know, the, uh, uh, the adrenaline, you know, and uh, I want us to be able to uh, look into that. Like, is there, is there, is there a point in time when the, there is fear, you know, of the unknown? Mm. And then maybe the enemy wants to use that as his bait to enter our life or our, prof our profession. And mm. uh, how do we deal with that? Then how do we demarcate mm. natural fear that make us to respond? I mean, I, I, somebody cannot say they want to shoot you and you say you are using faith mm. you, know, you have a you have an opportunity to escape to run mm. <laughs> and you better run and those mm. you know whatever or there's an accident that you can escape so we need to so if, if you say i'm afraid I, you know what are you talking about are you talking what's what's an unhealthy fear in my practice mm. which one is, is there anything called healthy fear at all you know, please jump in sir I, I personally do not believe in the concept of fear. I I believe that fear, once you are afraid about a situation, you are not going to be able to make the right decisions. Um, simple physiology, um, the pathways that um, fear takes um, in our neurological system tend to obstruct our ability to rationally assess something. So what I've told my team um, these past seven months is, we, we are not afraid, we are cautious. The two different things. I am not afraid, but I'm cautious. But then you can't just wish fear away. Fear is a natural human response. The question now becomes, how do you deal with fear? There are two ways to deal with fear. The natural worldly way, we're, we're Christians, you know, we're spirit people here, so this is very important. The natural worldly way to deal with fear is knowledge and caution. The more you know, the more you understand, the more you're able to protect yourself. As more and more information started filtering in about COVID-19, I'm a critical care um, doctor, I do critical care and I do internal medicine, so I was like in the middle of it all. Initially was everyone didn't know what to do. We were, how do you, what do we know what we don't know uh, but the more we started understanding what was going on our sense of fear began to decrease so there is a place for knowledge and there's a place for caution we started understanding that if you have the right you know personal protective equipment you will be preserved we also started understanding that if you focus on your personal health um, and lately we now know that if we start you on steroids early that you will do well. But that is looking at it from regular people's point of view. Um, we're not regular people. There is nothing regular about us. Um, 
The Bible says, for everyone that is born of God overcomes the world. Our situation is completely different. We are spirit-filled people, we're children of God. And I believe the only way to address fear is by the word of God and by believing what God's word says. It's another thing to know the word. It's another thing to have the word in you. And um, David says, thy word have I placed in my heart? Have I hidden in my heart? Uh, for a reason, he said, that I might not sin against you. But when we hide the word of God, I'll tell you one of the scriptures that blessed my life that I kept saying to myself through this COVID. I was intubating people that had COVID when we didn't even know what we were doing. And um, it's the scripture that says, henceforth, let no one trouble me because I bear in my body the marks of Jesus. You know, what I, what I say to myself every morning as I walked into the hospital, it's no one includes anything. It includes the virus. It includes diseases. It includes cancer. It includes poverty. And the Bible says, henceforth, by virtue of my new birth, nothing troubles me. Nothing sits in my body. I used to tell them at work, you know, this virus will not survive in my body. And it's, it's not because of anything is because I believe that that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit and viruses cannot thrive in spirit. You know, our, our, our levels of understanding might differ and it's okay. The Bible says we grow. We grow in grace and knowledge. But when time, desperate times calls for desperate measures and what's your desperate reaction as a child of God? You go into the word of God and you soak yourself in the word of God. You bury yourself in the word of God. Like she said, you create an atmosphere. There is an atmosphere that you show up with and viruses will see you and they'll run away. So one of the ways that I believe that as healthcare practitioners that we can defeat fear, it's knowledge. Know as much as you, you ought to know. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Know what you need to know in your field have the right ppe understand the virus understand how it is spread there is a place for that and then when we begin to wade into the waters there is a place where your level of oppression is beyond the normal the bible says jesus went about doing good and healing all manner including covid 19 including the ones that are yet to be discovered including if there's anything that's going to be covid 35 the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all manner. The Bible says, and he healed them all. It is that understanding that allows you to bury yourself in the blood, to activate the force in the blood that was shed at the Calvary. Speak over yourself. Speak over your patients. Speak, even if the virus mistakenly, trust me, I believe that in this process, I was exposed to the virus by nature of my job. But didn't the Bible says we shall even trample upon serpents and scorpions? That's the word. That's not my word. We have to be able to hold God accountable for his word. And you know, by saying these things over, it's like words of affirmation. As you say this every day, as you drive in your vehicle, as you walk through the hallways of the hospital, faith arises in you and fear will, will go away. Praise God. Wow, I don't know maybe to call you a preacher or to call you a... I'm not a preacher. I'm not a preacher at all. <laughs> there is no preacher born in me. You know, you know, you know that uh, you know that we're supposed to be the fifth gospel. People, they can assess um, Matthew, Mark, and Luke and John, but the one they are waiting for is for us to be that manifestation of the gospel. You know, and we want to thank God for that contribution. Um, I give God praise and, uh, and glory in that regard for uh, almost about more than 300 people, more than 300 people that God has healed through our prayers. Hallelujah. The, the, the latest was uh, one of uh, a very dear son of mine in the Lord whose father had a, a hospital in Africa and he's attending to a whole lot of people, you know, and you know that we don't have something solid there you know, in part of uh, West Africa and even East Africa. So he was, the father got COVID and uh, the father, the wife, 
and uh, there were eight people in the, in the in the household, and also I think six of them got COVID to the inter to, to, to the level where they I mean, the, you know, the father has to be given intravenous um, uh, uh, injection and all of those, and it was a very terrible situation. Can't talk, can't respond, and God intervened. All the family members, God healed them all. True, one thing the word and prayer and faith. The word produces faith and faith crush all of those things. Oh, yes. In first John chapter five, verse four, you say he that is one of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Our faith. Our faith. So I, I want to really thank God for that. Before I called on Annette again, uh, uh, Dr. Benjamin, uh, uh, I want you to just pop in here, you know, and uh, I I'd like you to please comment about uh, uh, the the um, the really crossroad or the bridge between healthcare system, holistic healthcare system, and miracles. Um, is there any interplay? Is there something that's higher or whatever it is? And we need to do our job and we need to have best practice. But I just wanted to come to, to comment because um, I have a question. It's a rhetoric. Why do Paul add Luke, Dr. Luke, on his company? You know, Luke was a doctor, a medical doctor. And Paul believed in healing. Paul, I mean, you read his testimony in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, chapter 10, where he was talking about so many things he's exposed to, you know, in 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 in, in, in among the robbers, in in the ocean, in the tent, and all of those things. And a messenger of Satan was given to him to buffet him. We don't know what that is, you know. Some of us can uh, drop into that. But where do medical science comes in? Where do miracles comes in? We have hospice uh, 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 situation, and uh, we've had a lot of testimonies miracles and we also have a lot of um, uh, you know uh, some um, unpleasant circumstances please can you come in here uh, dr benjamin absolutely thank you for um, asking me to co comment um can you hear me okay yes please. okay absolutely um no i think that it is something that a lot of people um really you know, work through in my time. Um, so I am a sleep medicine um, fellow right now. And so just recently graduated from my pediatric residency. So peds from my background. Um, but in my exposure in the um, ICU and, and, you know, critical care, um, you know, a lot of people, there's that immediate response that we, we are, are, you know, praying for a miracle and, you know, wanting for a miracle to happen. And I think that um, we have to um, have faith that the Lord is going to um, do what is within his divine sovereign will. And that if there is, there isn't the expected outcome that for some reason that is because of a lack of faith or a lack of God um, intervening. It's just he didn't intervene in a way that we expected. And so I think, you know, the the great opportunity that we have as Christian healthcare professionals is um, to be able to, you know, walk with people through those um, trials and tribulations um, and to be able to, um, you know, grieve with them when we have unexpected um, moments, um, but then be able to see the miracles that can come from that as well. You know, even if it is through a hardship that someone comes to know Christ, that is a miracle. And, you know, that's not, the, maybe not the miracle that people are expecting, um, but it's the, the miracle that God is working through. So I think my perspective is that we, we have to be open to the miracle of God's movement and not the miracle that we are wanting. 
Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Benjamin. That's a very, very powerful uh, contribution. Uh, we just have to work on our faith and then make sure that we don't, um, uh, we don't, uh, we, we live in the reality of it. And then, we, you know, we trust in the Lord that our hands and our profession will be such a miracle. And then, please, I have a question for you. Uh, that somebody uh, ask, and I'm going to just embellish it more. Now, you know, deep down in your heart that, you know one thing, this is beyond medical care. It can be done. And you know God can do it. How do you communicate that solution to your patient when it seems like they are not open to it? You know, because of fear. So how do you do that, you know, in a very ethical way, please? Gosh, so many so many things I want to comment on, but I'll I'll start with this one first. Go for it, please. Um, you know, sometimes I think that um we overthink the way that we should be representing Jesus in the workplace. You know, I think that when we think of uh, being a Christ uh, follower at work, that it's it's radical, you know, and it's, and it's praying with your patients. It's, you know, having a sticker on your head that says, I'm a Christian and I love Jesus or something. And sometimes it's not always that, right? Sometimes what really, goes a long way and what I have found personally in my practice it is that it's the more quiet gentle intimate ways that God is able to use me in the workplace um, so oftentimes unfortunately in healthcare in medicine it can be a toxic environment where the characteristics that are leading are of arrogance or are you know of intellect instead of compassion and love and grace and mercy and i can't tell you how effective i have been not only just with my patients but with my colleagues um with leading with characteristics like grace and mercy and love and patience and kindness um and i think that it's through those that they've seen hey there's something different about her they may not be able to put their finger on it but i'll tell you what every time they turn to me during this pandemic when it was literally a scene out of armageddon that's what work was like for me in the emergency room okay it was a scene out of armageddon it's loud people are running around with like chickens with their heads chopped off unfortunately i'm looking to my right and i'm looking to my left and i'm just seeing faces of anxiety and of fear but along with hosting god's presence you also usher in a heavenly calm and so they're looking and they're like what the what is she on you know what does she have that i don't have and they would say to me and then what how are you able to and i've got one word always jesus it got to the point where i was almost feeling guilty because my poor colleagues my friends the people that i loved were falling apart and i just wanted to bottle jesus and hand him out to them but i knew that i was still doing his work in the way that i was characteristically when people were accepting the the narrative of post-traumatic stress disorder of depression and anxiety for themselves and their families following this pandemic i rebuked it i said no i'm sorry that is not what i'm going to accept for me and my family i have too many generational curses i'm already trying to overcome i don't need to come into agreement with anymore and you know what you shift the culture that way those conversations begin to happen less right and when they're they're stressed and they're anxious they know who to go to and they know who i'm representing and that's jesus that is so powerful. Wow, wow. I think, I think, uh, I, I think God has really enabled you in the area of uh, ability to carry his presence. Because uh, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. And uh, that's very influential, you know, in terms of, you know, you step into a room, that aura, that effulgence, that presence of God. I mean, there's no way when darkness sickness and disease they are all rooted in darkness and uh like uh dr michael said about knowledge you know the revelation knowledge of god you're not even saying a word coming into the room you represent light you are the light of the world and and it's it's a law darkness you know darkness has no basis you can't turn off you can't turn on darkness like there's a switch let me turn on darkness you don't turn on darkness or turn it off just absence of light 
when light is not in the room, darkness takes over. But when light is there with the reality and the revelation, knowledge of the fact that we are the light of the word and that the source of our light is the word, the doing of the word in our own private life, the doing, not the preaching, the teaching, the knowledge, that we are doing it in our own private life when we step in. Oh my goodness, all those demons, oh, I'm gonna talk about that. All those demons of COVID and uh, all those kind of disease, whatever you name it, that has those spirit. You know one thing, they can see you and they step off. And that's why I wanna really maybe for a few minutes, as, as we close, share some few things with us because you have to really also watch your back in God. You know, you must watch your back because those guys that we can see, don't forget that Paul told us about this spiritual warfare and strategy. He said, we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Well, what a good um, uh, contribution. Thank you so very much. We're going to go to another question. And then, you know, a lot of questions, we're just going to really cut it short because of our time. Um, somebody said, uh, being an healthcare professional is not easy task. No matter what field you're in, you're expected to get things right the first time because of the immense responsibility that has been given to you. And there have been times when you felt overwhelmed or you kind of discouraged. I think Dr. Anil, um, somebody was saying something like that. You know, you can't just, just you, you kind of just, you're discouraged. And uh, how were you able to pick up yourself? So uh, Dr. Michael, please come in. Oh, thank you for that great question. And thank you, um, Annette, for that amazing, amazing input. Um, I've been there. Um, one night I got out of the hospital. I still cannot explain how I drove from the hospital home. Um, that night I had seen so many patients. Uh, people were so sick. The worst case scenario is one of my colleagues showed up in the emergency room and ended up being admitted into the intensive care unit. It's a close friend of mine. So it's natural for you to get overwhelmed. Um, the Bible says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You see, on our own, we just cannot help ourselves. If your draw of strength is in your human knowledge, um, COVID should have taught you a big lesson. Um, there was a time in, in around March when nobody knew what we were doing. One day, the federal government will approve hydroxychloroquine and give it expedited approval. Two weeks later, they'll pull it out. Um, it was like in the hospital. Every morning, I wasn't sure what the protocol was. It changed every morning. You know, and I've, I've practiced medicine for, for a long time. I have never seen everybody so confused. Infectious disease guys were confused. The critical, every, government was confused. Public CDC was confused this morning. At some point in your journey, you have to understand that everything is supernatural. Everything is spiritual. I'm not trying to be very religious, but this is true. Let me, let me tell you something that I learned because I'm sharing my own personal um, experiences. I found that, that you can give what you don't have. You know, like man of God was saying, you do the word. You don't just speak the word. You do the word. You know, if you soak yourself, what I did that night as I drove home is I went home, I went into the kitchen, and I, I didn't even take my clothes off. I didn't take my word coat off. I sat, I, I, I love to sing, I'm a worshiper. I sat on my keyboard and just, for the next hour, I was just in God's presence. I stood up from there a different kind of man, strength from above. Our hospitals are very tricky. Our healthcare system, especially in America and in other countries, is very tricky. You don't know what to say. You don't know how to say it. You don't know who to say it. Somebody might come to you and say, pray for me. And then tomorrow they're going to turn around and say, hey, you, you are exerting your religious convictions over me. So this is what the Holy Ghost taught me. The Holy Ghost showed me a scripture in John chapter 7, and I believe it's verse um, 38, where it says, whoever believes in me, out of them shall flow rivers of living waters. My belief is that as you spend your personal time as a healthcare worker, studying the word, praying, soaking yourself, 
you may not even know what to say. As you're walking, the streams will just flow out of you. People will run after you. Like Annette says, people will run after me at work and say, Doctor, I don't know what your religious belief is, but can we pray? They would even ask me, are you a Christian? Are you a Muslim? They would just say, can you? But because there is something. You see, Jesus was walking around the streets. He wasn't going around announcing himself. But even the woman of issue of blood just knew this guy that's crossing, if I just touch him, Jesus wasn't doing advertisement. Jesus wasn't a theologian. But it was just something about, like Annette says when she started, the presence that draws, that draws people. So I think for self-preservation and for the preservation of all the people that God has handed into our hands, the primary investment is you. He that dwells in the secret place of the most shall abide under the shadow. There is something about dwelling. You come at you, you don't need plenty talk. You don't need to learn the seven ways to speak to a patient or the seven technicalities of what to say. Something about you will just overflow. And I'm believe trust me, miracles will just open up everywhere. Praise God. What a wonderful, wonderful response. And I just want to give God praise for that. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. And um, I'm telling you. Yeah, God is God is just beautiful. God is beautiful, raising up overcomers in these last days in every field of life. Thank you very much for that. Um, I don't know, maybe uh, Dr. Long, you have something to say to that? Please feel free. Absolutely. I just wanted to echo what Dr. Michael was saying. That was absolutely on point. And I think you know something else. You know in. Um, First Peter, where it says, cast your cares on the Lord, for he cares for you, that it's so important to, throughout the day, have rhythms and practices where you are having the the Lord be the center of your focus. You know, I, we, we want to be in that constant state of prayer and that we are spiritual people who are living out the kingdom of God that we know will be fully realized when Jesus comes again. But we are living in that. You know, Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount that, that, the, um, that the kingdom is at hand. It's here right now. And so we can live into that. And I think part of that that we, um, I think has been important for me as a healthcare professional is learning that rhythm of um, ways and practices to bring God to the center of your focus, but also having that pattern of service and rest and service and rest. Because without being able to fill yourself, you know, back up, even the Lord rested. He had a Sabbath and that is important. We can't idolize the Sabbath as Jesus, you know, healed the paralytic um, and saw that the love of neighbor was more important than the, the law of the Sabbath. But the the importance of having that rest to you know you know jesus even was ministering to the people and then he would withdraw and having that rhythm as well and reflecting the way that christ ministered we need to reflect that as well in our practice of medicine and so um having those practices that are centering christ in your daily walk but then making sure that even though we have this calling and this um, pursuit to bring that to other people, to make sure that you are developing that Sabbath um, approach as well. Wow, what, what a powerful one. We, we, we need you all here for uh, between and the time Jesus comes back. Uh, if if, if, if uh, we, we, his, his coming is very imminent and then uh, everybody needs to also know that we need to take that rest. We need it for ourselves. We need to rejuvenate, we need to recuperate, we need to think, we need to, that's extremely very needed. A lot of things God has been speaking and because we're very busy, very involved, and sometimes, you know, at the back of our mind, we think we are the almighty, like, you know, we got all the answer, you know, we must always think, you know, behind everything that it is God that walks in us. Dr. Michael uh, quoted our scripture but to will and to do of his good. We're just vessel in his hands and he's going to use us mightily. We want to think of, now I want us to say something I don't want us to forget, you know, and um, you see, um, I, I think the, 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 the burden is going from individuality to a lot of corporate, uh, corporate uh, um, uh, P 
people, you know, coming together with different resources and ability and uh, not just kind of, you know, I want to be, I want to take the show, I want to be the, uh, the game player, all of those things. Now, and that's the reason why, I, one of the reasons why I'm asking that, uh, I'm saying that, is because uh, we know in some uh, disenfranchised nation, and I'm going to call it developing nation, beautiful nation, majority world nation, um, the, the access to good air quality is not there. And uh, because of that, a lot of people have lost their life, you know, and uh, God is faithful. I don't know, maybe because of the statistics, uh, maybe something really weird happened. But I mean, when you look at it, even here in the U.S., um, we have the, the data shows that is the, is the really epicenter of the entire world with our best, you know, I mean, state of the art uh, uh, medical uh, uh, facilities and healthcare system. And what's not you know we know that but despite that we still record the highest level of death in covid you know and infections and all that all that kind of thing and, and to me uh, i'm gonna pose two questions from here and i'm just gonna ask first the first one first to me um what picture are we painting to the world america great nation my country, I mean, I tell you, it's a privilege for me to be an American and I'm not taking that for granted and I want to give God all the praise. But um, um, there are a lot of factors, you know, um, and I just want you to help me out. You know, you know, there's some culture and tradition that we respect a lot. We respect all cultures. We're very sensitive. Where things like nursing home is not, you know, prevalent. People really want their elderly people to stay with them. And uh, and then when you look at it, scientifically, maybe it's not proven. You see that there, there's no more COVID death in such cultures, such as in Asia and in Africa, you know. But, but, but when you look at some other places in the West, because of the nursing home issue, you know, we have a lot of death, you know, and so many things that happen. So um, where do... Uh, confidence in god comes comes in that as nationally nationally right now and i'm not i'm not talking politically nationally in terms of what's our testimony as a nation what is our testimony that uh, we are known to be a christian nation and yet we recorded the highest you know uh, uh a number in terms of covid death how do we explain that to a place where they don't even have the infrastructure? They don't have nothing. And they only have God, you know? <laughs> we know how to see. Because when you know you don't have anything, you know that you only have God, your your response will be very, 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 very powerful. So, Annette, please, can you come into that, please? Yes, I'll try. Um, I think that we have to remember that truth trumps fact right it trumps evidence it trumps data and we and truth comes from the bible right it comes from god's word and i think that dr michael hit on it he said you know initially in the beginning of this we were all scrambling right we didn't know what this thing was we didn't know how to treat it um, as he mentioned things were changing on an almost day-to-day -day basis. Many of us were practicing outside of our scopes even. Um, and even infectious disease doctors on down didn't have the answer and it leveled the playing field for us, right? No one had an advantage um, and it humbled us all down. And everyone was looking for the answer, right? A miracle. And the miracle and the answer really, it lied in the very basics, which is prayer, which is God's word. You know, and I think that Christian healthcare professionals, though it didn't make, look like to, like it to some people, we had the advantage, right? And it wasn't because our nose was in a textbook. It wasn't because we knew something they didn't besides Jesus. You know, I think that in that also, it allowed us to be okay with submitting to God's sovereign will it was okay and it took off the pressure and it gave us peace and so we could practice in peace instead of under pressure and i think that that is what saw me through okay before before you cool down please um 
why do some why do some Christians die with COVID and uh, even pastors? Um, how do you explain that to, <laughs> to somebody you want to minister to? Children have questions. We are raising an intelligent generation. What are you going to tell them? Are you telling me about faith? Dr. Michael is telling me about belief God, no virus can get to me. And they're fine. I, I know you, you know, we might want to say dribble into okay, where I don't know whether they believe what they believe, whatever it is, but pastors, real key pastors, died with all precautions, you know, and uh, speaking the way we are speaking. What are you going to tell the young ones and uh, uh, somebody that's really on the edge? I don't believe in God, I believe in God whose faith is really shaken, you know, the trying of your faith. What are you going to tell them, please? So it's an answer that I've given a ton of times, even beyond COVID, right? Um, and there is no hard and fast, this is the reason why. I think that once you grow in relationship with the Lord, right, you grow intimate with Him, you begin to understand who He is and His characteristics and His love for you, you no longer need an answer. You no longer need to understand completely because you trust. And I always say to them, if you would just give him an opportunity, get to know him, number one, he will give you those answers or number two, he won't and you won't even need them anymore. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, Dr. Michael, please. <laughs> This is a very important question. If I tell you how many times that I've been asked that, um, I had friends, I, I went to med school in Nigeria, but then I did my residency and fellowship here. And I had people calling me from Nigeria, oh, pray with us, and then at work. I told you, my colleagues um, died. Uh, it's a very important question, but let me tell you what the Holy Ghost have said to me. And uh, our relationship with God is personal. Um, Paul says that I may know him. I, him. And, and in that revelation, he tells you what he needs to tell you. What God has taught me is there is an understanding of the concept of what we call the Lordship of Christ, the Lordship of Jesus. And when we give our lives to Christ, what we are submitting to, it's the Lordship of Christ. There are benefits but the Lordship of Christ trumps, well, using the word trump, trumps the benefits of Christ. And it has helped me in my personal life because I've suffered some personal losses too. And I've gone to God and say, this is not consistent with the things that you've told me. And he says, primarily, number one, I am your Lord. Before I even become your healer, I am your Lord. Before I become your provider, I am your Lord. And what does Lordship mean? It says, whatever you choose to do, I will be fine. Lordship. Um, Paul says it this way, I am crucified with Christ. I, like my, my needs are secondary to the concept of me having died to my own needs. So it comes to the point, that's why I keep emphasizing our work with God cannot be Christianity as usual or religion as usual. If not, you will tire out, you will become exhausted. Pastors are killing themselves. Doctors are committing suicide. People, worship leaders, people who have memorized the whole scriptures will one day lose it and shoot themselves. So it's beyond the logos. There's got to be a relationship that I may know him. Look at what Paul said, and stop me, man of God, whenever you want. To. Paul says that I may know him and then he says something about the fellowship of his suffering, right? There's a fellowship there. It's the understanding that whatever God does is perfect. It takes time to come there, but as you begin to build a personal relationship with him, it's like if you have a spouse, there's a point in your relationship that you no longer hold him onto perfection. They will annoy you and you're like, it's okay, it's you. So the Lordship of Jesus is something that we must, we must teach. When we come and say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior, there is no clause there that says, only if you will heal me when I ask. 
only if you will make me the richest man on earth. Can he do these things? Yes, sir, he does. But is that why we follow him? No. As we continue to follow him, and this is what we share to people, it is in the life that he gives. It is in the abundant life that he gives. And then I want to say something about America as a country. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, there is a place for humility in America. I've lived in this country for so many years. There's a place. We are what's power. We can go to the moon. We can do this. We can do this. God is calling us to humility from the White House to the Gator Streets. God is calling for humility. God is calling for prayer that's not political, not prayer days, not prayer prayer that's prayed on, the, on, on, on camera. God is calling for broken and contrite heart. And I'll tell you one more thing. I think God is strategically positioning the church to take over. And that's why I think anyone that is in a strategic position you could be in healthcare, you could be in finance, you could be in architecture, you could be in construction. I hear it so loud in my spirit. We need to get ready. The kingdom of this world is becoming the kingdom of our Lord and of Christ, and he will reign forever. Amen. Wow, 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 wow. Well, you, 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 are, you brought out a question for me that I'm going to ask later on. That's very powerful. And, uh, you know, I think, I think, you know, like those three boys, Ananiah, Mishin, and Azariah, they three boys, he'll deliver us. <laughs> That's good. Maybe it's going to save us. But even if it does not, even if it does not, we will not still bow. But, but for the sake of, uh, I, I like Dr. Long to come in. You know, um, well, you tried all your best, everything. I know many doctors have been there, you know, uh, and met all of them. And, you know that, yeah, he's going to give up. He's not going to make it. Medical science, you know that. And maybe even the Holy Spirit tells you he's not going to make it. So you broke the news that the person passed. How do you personally feel? Do you think you're helpless? Or you're not? Or you're just like, I mean, emotionally, how do you feel? You know, because I mean, I see a lot of people with long face. I see a lot of people as if like they've grown, they've mutated into like, okay, yeah, yeah, this is what we see every day. This is the hospital. We have a lot of debt. How do you feel personally? Um, yeah, please come in. Um, yeah, I. Uh, I'm sorry. You, you have okay. a lot of things to do. You have to go back to another room, another ward. So, you know, like, Hey, yeah, he died. Sorry, I gotta go. Right. What what goes on with me? Um, I I my personal experience with death in the hospital has mainly been in the neonatal ICU. Um, you know, with some premature infants um, who just um, you know were not able to to make it, and um, I think you know something that I've had to lean into and and go into is the fact that I cannot expect anything that my Lord didn't experience for me to not be able to experience. And that Christ suffered and died. Christ did not have a place to lay his head. You know, so so any reality that Christ experienced has to be part of my reality as well. And the fact that that you know that we can't we don't have to fear death because death isn't the end death is just the beginning and i think that is you know in those those hard moments when you're um you know you're experiencing that to know that you know that 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 baby is in a in a better place now and that they have you know are in presence with the father so why do i need to wow, be sad i need to be joyful for that infant wow, wow wonderful i think david said you know during, during the birth of that uh, daughter uh, that baby from his uh, relationship with i don't want to say adulteress but that's what it is you know the first child that david had with Bathsheba, and when the baby died 
you know, uh, I was uh, David. When David has not been eating for seven days, he stood up and he went to go and take a shower and said, "Well, I am going to meet him where he is, but he can't come." And he was he was having his uh, normal lifestyle, and everybody was just kind of perturbed, like flabbergasted. Man, what's going on? What's going? On? I think that's the right attitude. It's only that uh, I think sometimes people think that many doctors have grown thick or hard or callous because of the norm because that's what that's what happened there um annette you want to come in there and say something so that um you know you don't want anybody to think oh you can't do anything about it please and you just walk up what are you trying to what's the balance yeah so there there needs to be a balance right because um, Dr. Long is 100% correct, right? We know this child is in a better place, right? He know we know he is better off where he is. Of course, this is not me. This is probably not the way you want to tell the parents, right? So we need to have a sense of compassion, and we need to be careful with the words that we use to um, articulate what it is that we're feeling about it, and respect how it, however it is that they're feeling about it. Um, and we, and the minute that we don't feel um, compassionate, the minute that we we don't feel torn, you know, then that's probably the time where we need to hang up our coat um, and give it up, um, or seek Lord and be re refueled and you know re-energized, whatever it is, and you know, because we should always be compelled to compassion. We should always be in a place where even when things are going wonderfully, for example, um, I'm from New Jersey. So I'm in one of the very few green COVID states, right? So my, my daily work right now looks very different than those that are, you know, for example, in Florida or in Texas, right? Um, but I can't forget that just two, three months ago, I was dying you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, like, and so I never want to forget that feeling. I never want to forget just because I'm over the hump, you know, I always want to remember that there is someone out there that is still struggling, that is still hurting. And I always want to be compelled to compassion the way that Jesus was. Sorry. That's very beautiful, and uh, thank you so so much for that contribution. Um, Stephanie uh, commanded uh, John sixteen thirty three in the world you will have tribulation. Another one said distress, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus is the one who overcome, not we. He lives in us. So because he lives in us, we will overcome. I, I, I want to say it better that way. So we don't see ourselves as an overcomer. Jesus is the overcomer, but he lives on the inside of us. So we are bound to overcome. And then uh, thank God for uh, Unwuke Grace. To my own understanding, the Bible said, faith without work is useless, it's death. And God being the omniscience, have his own way of doing things. And also it's all that, it's not all that calling father, father, and our real children of God. So what am I trying to say? American believe uh in their science and god allowed what happened to happen because he wants to prove himself that no matter our science is still our creator that's very correct so it was just a simple way to call us back to himself some pastors that were affected maybe the ones who was referring maybe they were not all that called him father and his son well god know it I'm so happy to be here listening to you all. What an amazing output. I thank God for everybody. Um, let me just, maybe this can be the uh, penultimate uh, question before we round up. Uh, the, pa the pandemic has revealed the shortcomings of healthcare shortcomings. Wow. Globally, where money seems to be the apex of all discussions rather than how advances can be made to help the people. Although many advances have been made in medicine and healthcare, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. And I know a lot of things have really developed. I'm, I'm telling you, you know, what the enemy meant for bad, God turned around to be good. I mean, a lot of stuff from NASA to uh, engineers, to those who are in charge of the same virologists, you know, epidemiologists, a lot of stuff has come out, you know, and um, 
As a healthcare provider, how do you feel when people become collateral damage as a result in the lack of unity among leaders of global health? So, uh, Dr. Michael, please jump in. Thank you, sir. Um, so, I, I, I think if there's anyone, look, this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that as children of God and as smart people, we have to start looking at medicine from a preventive point of view other than a curative point of view. Um, anytime you're looking for cure, you are many years behind. And that's the truth. Just name it. Um, HIV, tuberculosis, but anytime we are running around looking for cure is because we are already at the symptomatic stage. I mean, look at how many people that have died. I believe so strongly that the next phase in medicine is going to be the biblical phase in medicine, right? Healthy eating, take care of yourself. Stay away from artificial sweetness. You know, Daniel and the three Hebrew children, I love that scripture, told they were in the king's house. They had all the nice things, the shawarma, the McDonald's, it, that, you know, all those nice food, packaged well. But Daniel says, give us vegetables, give us fruit, and see what happens. There is a message in there which is saying that really the sustenance of health may not even be attached to modern technology. The sustenance of health. Praise God for all of the recent advances. But I'm telling you until we all, and I'm, I say it as an internal medicine specialist, I, know, I understand medications, that's what I do for a living. I write prescriptions. But I also know that how long do you want to take diabetes medication? I think you should. How long shall we continue to take hypertensive medications? We're finding that there are things that you can do. We saw it in COVID. When we start looking at all the data, we are seeing those who died from COVID. We're seeing those that it hit first. We're understanding that there's a place for health maintenance. We can wait for, for the government to put things in place. And we pray, we can only pray. When you're hoping on the government, all you can do is pray and pray that people who have the fear of God will take this position and really care about the people on the streets. Otherwise, an average politician does not care about the men on the streets. That's the truth. So what can you do as an individual? What can we do as healthcare workers? Educate our patients on healthier lifestyle. I'm telling you, there will not be any technology that will be better than that. Exercise, eat healthy, intermittent fasting. Fasting, and I'm not trying to be religious, beyond the spiritual benefits, has amazing healthcare benefits. In fact, there are data that are showing that people can starve cancer cells to death. You, know, you're right. you can look it up and Google it, Google intermittent fasting. So I think God is calling us to this place where we are not running around looking for cure. God is calling us to a better lifestyle. God is calling us to be careful, to treat our bodies like the temple of God. If your body is a temple of God and you have honor for it, you wouldn't be puffing nicotine into it. Common sense, this is not even spiritual. If your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, you won't be pouring liquor and alcohol that has no nutritional benefit into it. Common sense. This one is not come to Jesus talk. Common sense. So I believe that as healthcare practitioners, God is calling us to return, to return to the basics, to return to understanding we can teach people the value of staying hydrated. People are losing their kidneys every day just because they were dehydrated for the longest time and no one did anything about it. So if there is anything I believe that COVID ought to teach us, man of God, as a man of God who you have a, a powerful platform and God is doing amazing things through it. Those platforms as, you know, uh, Benjamin as a, a pediatrician, Annette, all of the physicians here, train your, the people that you come across. We, we have, a, we wield a lot of leverage. 
you know, sometimes instead of that med for me, sit down that extra five minutes and teach them diet, teach them lifestyle, follow them up, give them, I do it. I just, some of my patients, I call and say, how much water have you drunk today? Such accountability. COVID has taught me um, that modern medicine may not be the solution and that modern technology may not be the solution. I think God is calling all of us back to the basics. Powerful one, and uh, I'll tell you something, uh, the Holy Spirit is, uh, is emphasizing that. We're really very grateful. And uh, I tell you, uh, 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 I, I, I trained as a geneticist, and uh, I, um, I have a little, uh, sometimes I'm amazed by how things mutate. You know, especially with this even COVID issue, you know, from one level of mutation to another, and just new stories every day and different approaches. And the key, like Dr. Michael said, is that um, I think God is God is just God is just uh, sitting over His own day. We've had our own days. Uh, the sixth day belong to man. We've done what we want to do, and I think we are at the center of the day of the Lord where God choose to do whatever he wants to do based on his word. It's a sovereign God. And that's why some things, some news will really shock some people in these last days because God is already at work. I want to thank of everybody. I feel one few things to share with us. But before that one, I'm going to uh, ask uh, Ayong to just uh, um, uh, come in and just minister to us in songs. And thank you very much. Uh, let's go ahead. Hi. Um, hi, this is Hyung. Um, I'm, I'm in South Korea now, and it's kind of uh, 5 a.m. Um, actually, I'm a, a student of Boston University, and my major is uh, violin performance. Uh, and I'm doing my doctorate there, but because of the COVID-19, I, uh, I mean, uh, I, I am doing my classes online. Yeah, so I'm so happy to meet you guys, and I heard what, uh, what you guys are praying for and uh, want to, I mean, change something. I mean, <laughs> um. I'm so happy that I am in here and uh, I will play uh, two praises. The first one is uh, Mirror My God. Uh, it's kind of hymn song. Yeah, it's a Near My God to be. And the second uh, song will be uh, still from Hillsong. So I want to share these um, praises because you know if you look at the Romans uh, chapter 14, uh, for no one of us lives to himself alone and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord and if we die, we die to the Lord. So what, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. So yeah, I really think about this Bible verse uh, when I pray uh, for this meeting. So the only thing that I can do in this situation is uh, loving uh, God by loving His word, words, I mean Bible and uh, just thankful. I can be thankful that he uh, gave me salvation. And I think and it is the really good opportunity to deliver about the name of Jesus and gospel because so many people have fearness in their mind and they want to live longer than they expect yeah maybe um so you guys can you hear me yes. so uh, can i start yes, please. yeah okay
Wow, we give God praise. We give God Thank praise. you. Yeah. So are you ready for the second song right now? Or if you have something in between? Oh, I think uh, this song is fine because I already I can spend five minutes. Okay, okay. Is it? Yeah, I think it's, it's enough for now. That's fine. <laughs> uh, we, we have a clip that I want us to just watch right now. And, um, well, l let, me, let me say this. Uh, uh, Grace, uh, thank God for your contribution. Beautiful. Um, um, let, me, let me say this. Um, I am not a pastor. I'm just a child of God. I just love this God. I just love him. Since 1989, I've been involved in missions to the unreached nations. Uh, the 1040 window or the majority world um, uh, from Vietnam to Laos to Cambodia to Oman to Iraq to uh, Kuwait and uh, Pakistan we're doing some little things in Saudi Arabia you know North Africa I started from really northern Nigeria you know, I, I didn't school there. I schooled in Nigeria, in the premier university there as my undergrad. So, and um, why did I say that? I didn't say that to, to, to cause any attention. I say all that because uh, we're in the last days and only God must have gathered these kind of people together from different kind of places. It's a little small part, platform. But you know one thing, great things becomes uh, great things start like these. And it might just be one moment. Maybe this is <laughs> this is just the only moment we'll ever gather like this in a platform. But there's always a, a godly reason for something. There's always uh, a divine reason, especially for those who are led by the spirit of the living God. You know, so uh, I believe very, very strongly that we need to move from just that kind of uh, 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 individualism, something we can do corporately to help our world. You know, I, I've sampled a lot of people's uh, contribution, very, very powerful. You know, I've learned, I've been informed, and I realized that we're in the last days where God is just putting his body together. You know, now we're not, we're not, we're not saying that. The enemy is not doing his own thing, you know, and uh, we're not, I, I know all those things, uh, we've been at the center of it, you know, but, but we, we're focusing more on what God is doing, you know, in the midst of darkness, in the midst of losses, in the midst of so many chaos. What is God saying? What is God doing? And I, and I want us to see from that point in time, look at you, look at me, we're alive. Why? You know, Esther says, we know it that you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I know a lot of people are involved in several things that you're doing in your own personal life to help people, to help humanity. I want to show you this video and um, primarily because uh, I want you to be involved in something, not in my thing. And if you're involved in it, I want to encourage you and thank God for it. You know, and um, uh, so many things like like uh, Dr. Michael was saying, this is the temple of God. He has already given us how to clean his temple, how to detox. Everything is in the Bible. You know, um, I'm not uh, somebody that's saying, forget Old Testament, forget New Testament. I see Bible as a composite book. It's a uniform book. It's Jesus. That's, that's the word. And when you look at it, everything that's needed from fasting to the food that you eat, to following the law, to asking for mercy, to the power in communion, to all those things, to not, you know, having depression, joy is the cure for depression, to casting all your care upon the Lord, to live a successful life, to, to live a sad, everything has been provided for all of us, all of us. There is nothing there. And the only thing is that, you know, I mean, we don't, we don't follow God's instructions and a whole lot of people. So please, I want to encourage you, if you've been doing that, you're involved in something to help somebody somewhere, uh, some people, a nation, a people, whatever you can do, 
please go ahead and do that in addition to what you're doing and i'm believing very strongly that regarding god's last day's agenda all of us will feature there and we play a major role we can do great things if we do it together now when we do it individually the needs of the entire globe is too much which many have politicized you know um, a lot of self-aggrandizement mismanagement a lot of empathy sympathy and all of those things is just causing things not to balance but how are we going to be talking about it I, I, or just debate i don't think this is the time we, we need to talk about we need to jump in little thing you do little thing you say little effort you make is making a ton of difference and so i'm going to play this clip uh, briefly and uh just to um, introduce us to this and you're already doing that god bless you and uh uh, you've not, please find a place and means to get involved in your own world and as the Holy Spirit leads you. Please, let's go. I can somebody help me out to play that. All right, thank you. for the great things he's doing especially in GRA mission squad all around the world you know that uh, God is really helping us to really extend all through the majority world that used to be called the 10 40 window nations I don't think for anybody watching me you need to uh, think that's a strange language to use it a missiological uh, language you know uh, the resistant belts they uh, you know gradually then reached nations you know some call it unreached but you know it's being reached right now and I'll tell you something there are a lot of problems in the nations you can look at some of the clips right now um, especially co compounded with this COVID-19 situation we have men and women on the ground and uh, some of the, uh, the pictures and uh, uh, footage is sent to us especially from Africa it's just it's just really touching and I think you and I we have a lot of things to do you know when a nation is really um, impoverished you know poor and then there's no too much access of gospel then compounded with uh, the uh, coronavirus situation that would really God has placed on nice feet now um, even the Christians that are there they are being layered to uh, other uh, other order to be to join other faith and you know the implication of that because when there's no food when there's no clothing when uh, the living condition of people are so terrible you know um, it, it's, a lot of people will, will really be tempted to want to think well where are my Christian brothers and sisters they don't care so I might have just you know joined this uh, offer that people are giving up to me but I know that you might be thinking in your heart we need to raise disciples and disciples are supposed to know that you know um, uh, what shall separate me from the love of God but these are you're talking about disciples these people are just children in the Lord you can see them you know from these uh, uh, footages that you're watching so I, I want you to really talk to the Lord and see how we can be of help to people you know um, we know we are going for the gospel and we thank God but there's a way we can penetrate through that so we penetrate through humanitarian Jesus wanted to penetrate to Samaria and the first thing he told the woman is, I want to give you water. I want to give you what you're looking for to quench your thirst. You know, when he preached to almost about 5,000 men with their wives and children, he said, I don't want to go send these people away. Um, uh, I don't want to send them hungry. I've got to feed them. I've got to do something about them. And if, if we say we have the love of God, and folks are, are naked, they are poor, they are, uh, you know, they, they don't have a place to sleep. You, I mean, you look at where people are staying. I mean, it's so filthy. It's so full of filthiness that the, 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 the clip you're watching right now is about a literal house you know um, that that um, that shed built with uh, touched uh, planks that's where people are sleeping you can imagine the water they're drinking 
you know so I, I like you to, to jump in what do you want to do about this I leave that between your God and between you and your maker the one who loves you who kept you for such a time as this what do you want to do um, you, you're gonna be watching a clip about uh, the water that we just uh, by the grace of God been able to uh, provide for the entire community you know and that's a bowl very clean water to the praise and glory of God and those initiatives and beyond saints will be providing well water that's what we can afford in those villages as of the time especially you know among our Muslim brothers but now we're changing that because where water is not all that clean to borehole water which is really expressly uh, and which is really very very expensive so why am I coming in today I just want you and I to do our own part we got a lot of uh, we, uh, we got a part to play and if we do our part you know God Almighty we continually release to us he just wants us to be an avenue a pipe so when we release everything God has given to our hands God will give us more and more let me pray for you father everyone watching your children will not live this way you know your family will not be a beggar on the street you'll not be looking for what to eat you know this this kind of house is not gonna be where you will end your life God's gonna help you what you're watching and you want to help to be a blessing to other people in the name of Jesus you'll not be that person that will live such a life father we thank you because you made us to sit above he said we are with you forever sitting above every principalities and powers in Jesus name I had to do this especially during this COVID-19 because I'm so touched myself my household GRF family our friends sons and daughters precious we are doing our part but we believe there's a part you two can play and you can do and you don't want it together we form a big family making changes for the kingdom of God man God bless you you want to uh, think about the way you can contribute please go to our website grmissionscourt.global or grgodsremnassembly.org and uh, or look at all the other information you can call you know and uh, uh, just just do just do something those who want to do you will know that you will find a way of doing what you want to do god bless you and you know one thing god will always increase you more and more and more and more the little or whatever you can do right now i'll tell you next time it's going to be more and more and more and more for his glory in jesus name god bless you we thank God for that please this is not a means of looking for support it's not a means of looking for anybody to donate anything I'm just showing you these for you to be involved in whatever God has called you to do some of you you've been doing it I want to thank God for you you are God's hands you are God's feet some of you you can't do it because you are doing you are helping another way you know information touching lives I just want to encourage you keep doing what you're doing and I'm telling you God is watching you you know it's a rewarder it, it, it doesn't just, not just it does not just reward us with finances and all those things that we've really uh, mistrued but it's also rewarding us with his protection and preservation keeping us alive and preserving us and that 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 takes me to this place where I want us to really end this uh, powerful time um, a lot of people have made uh, reference to this and I want to thank God for that. Maybe just add one or two things. Everything in life, you know, as an order, the highest order is the spiritual order. God is spirit. And we know, we, we, we should know that. The spirit, spiritual order, real. God is spirit, is the, is the one that governs everything. It's our creator, it's our leader, it's our everything. And um, of course, you know that we have an enemy and I believe very strongly the purpose of the enemy also is to shape us how are you going to explain what happened to Job? God wants to give him double and Ned said beautiful things about that as a matter of all the panelists said something about that you know where was God when Satan stood before God and began to uh, make some you know comments God was the one that started it and God had a plan for Job. I want to give him double I want to bless him and that's always the process just like you saw that God said let us make man in our image and after our likeness I want to make people that look like me and I'll tell you something I know everybody has their own maybe personal theology or belief system I believe very strongly that 
when God says, let us make in mind our image and after our likeness, first Adam up to last Adam is also part of the process. Because all that God wants to do is to say, hey, listen, let us make mind our image. I'm the real man. I'm the man. Jesus, God is the real man that can be made in our And so the process of making that man is for Jeremiah 18, put the clay in your hands and the clay was messed up, first Adam, and put the second clay, and the same thing, put the second clay in your hand and form it and say, hey, look at it, that's my man. When you see Jesus, that's the man I told you. So he is 100% God, he is 100% man. He's touched with all the feelings of our infirmity. You know, God slept. And as a spirit, he doesn't sleep. He was hungry as a man, but he never hunger as a spirit. So I say all of that to let us know that, you know, God is a God of the spirit. And also that is to let us know that, you know, we also have spiritual forces fighting against us. And the, one of the real key reasons for that is God wants to bring the best out of us. Out of us. He wants to try our faith. He wants us to grow. He doesn't want us to remain a child. Unto us, a child is born. And the child that is born, everybody will be so scared to take that child to Egypt. That's Jesus. Because the child can't do nothing. So Joseph and Mary had to rush him down to Egypt. But you don't do that for that son at the age of 30. Jesus confronted death. He wasn't running away from it because he's no more a child. It's a, it's a son. Because there is something coming after death. It's the resurrection power that I may know him. He quoted our scripture wonderfully, the power of his resurrection. And nothing resurrects without death until something dies. Except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, he abided alone. But if he dies, he'll bring forth fruit. And the desire of God is for us to be fruitful. So, now, why do I say that? You are not warning against flesh and blood. That diabetes, that carcinogenic substance and cancer and uh, high blood pressure and uh, whatever you call it all of those things are demons not to scare us and you are on the line so it's not just somebody say this beautifully like all the you know we, we know we're dealing with chemicals you know all the signs all the medication all of those you know it's so it's, it's not just that now and many of us are, are getting a glimpse into it. We have to be really solid with our work with God. The words that are speaks to you, they are spirit. So the word of God is literally spirit. You see, the words that are speak to you, they are spirit. He said that when the enemy comes in like a flood, he said the spirit of God will lift up a standard. What's the standard? The word, because the word is spirit. So we must be men and women right now that is watching our back in terms of our personal work with God. Now, how do you feel? You know, um, there's a demon in the room. It's a demon of um, high blood pressure, whatever it is, atherosclerosis. And you step in a Christian doctor and you know, you're cool, you're everything, or a nurse or RNA or whatever it is, but you are not loaded. When you cast that, when you, do you, whatever you have to do and prescription, everything was fine. And that demon jumps out. You remember what Jesus said? <laughs> he said he goes to a dry place to seek rest. He said, if he cannot find rest, he's going to go and look for another seven. Seven plus one is eight. Eight is new beginning. He said the state of that man will be worse than the beginning. So are you sure, like David, when he killed lion? He took, no, he took the sheep from the lion. The lion did not leave David. He didn't leave. The lion came back after David. That's a picture of what we're doing. That's a picture. It's going to come back after you. Not to get you scared, but to get you prepared. Because we have talked about the fact that we are overcomers in all of these things. Every truth that we know, we will be proven for it. I mean, I, when God begins to prove and try me 
I, I thought that there are some certain things that I will escape because of this and that. I never knew that, man, wow, this is tough and rough. When you get into the nitty gritty, you get into the nucleus of stuff. I'll tell you something, God's, God's going to take some juice. And for God to get some juice, something has to be crushed. He pleased the Father to bruise him. Talking about Jesus. He, he, he really pleased God to get him bruised. Because you can't get that juice without crushing. So we need to watch our back. You spiritual, maybe your wife is not. I know you're covering them. What about your children? I've, I've had to be, to help a whole lot of people by God's mercy and grace, feeling the medical line, who, I mean, even, even in law, heartening, they're dealing with family uh, law and their home is a wretch. Some of them are Christians and they love the Lord, they're medical doctors, and they have children that have terrible health concern. There was one we're dealing with in Kentucky that the son, you know, Christian, I mean, he's a Christian doctor, he's a nephrologist, and the wife was a cardiologist, and maybe because of time, whatever it is, and the child literally shot somebody at college. I mean, so they were devastated. I mean, he, that's their first, their first son. So the enemy goes back behind. So what is the understanding of that? This is it. We have to use this principle and only God can show us. Moses was on the mountain. He was on the mountain interceding for Joshua. We need to be cooperate in these last days. We, we are interconnected, especially those that have the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about the Babylon church. I'm not talking about the materialistic thing. I'm not talking about, you know, that makes somebody come up. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about God's end time saints, the last day saints. They might not be 100% perfect, but they want to be perfect. That I'm, you know, forgetting things behind, pressing forward. They are pressing. They are pressing. They want to know God. They want to be like Jesus. Jesus is their key. You know, now we, we're not meeting at church. So church is not, <laughs> church is not the, the end of the, of the show. As a matter of fact, you know, you know, you know, Jesus is coming for a glorious church, but the glorious church is not the end of Jesus. No, you don't marry a wife and that's the end. He must produce son. The world is waiting for sons. Where you go to the hospital, you are a son of God. See, he said the Greek in John chapter 12, they desire to see Jesus. People want to see Jesus without you preaching. You, you're touching somebody with your stethoscope. They want to see Jesus touching them. They want to, they want to touch Jesus. He said, he said, he said, Dr. Michael said that if I should go touch, touch. I mean, you know, touch. The, the, the nations want to, that's why it will be very difficult for us to, to, to prove anything in America. The church of God, we might not prove anything in America because we're all about words. We're all about celebrity. We're all about politicizing things as a church until we get to the nitty gritty. And the world can see us producing solutions in lives, healing, delivery. That's the only thing that can touch America and the nations of the world. I'm telling you this, there must be an Elijah company that we turn the hearts of children, not back to self, not back to a denomination, not back to a system, but back to God. So Moses was on the mountain, assisted by Heron and Hall. Look at the corporate, look at the corporate move of God. Look at the head. Look at the hoil flowing from the head down the garment. Look at that. Psalms 133. Unity. Oh, now we are divided. No, don't tell me that it's only black and white. Don't tell me that. We are divided. We are divided within ourselves. Within ourselves, we are divided. Husband and wife divided. You know, homes divided, family divided, everybody divided. And that's why we can't stand. This is Babylon, which means division. So we need to work on unity, not when we gather together, but unity of purpose, unity of goals, the unity we find in scripture, the unity of Jesus, what Jesus really is. And the only thing that can unite us is this Jesus, where all of us with different backgrounds, all the way from South Korea, from UK, from uh, Miami, from uh, Texas, anyway. We just come together not knowing each other before, but because we are bought by one blood, one faith, one doctrine, 
one baptism, one Lord, one purpose, one goal. We just come together, though we might have little, little different, but that's, that's irrational, that's uh, non-fundamental, you know, we're not majoring on minors, we major on the major. Now, the three duo were on the mountain, Moses in the middle, assisted by Heron and Hall. What was the, what was Dr. Joshua doing? What was Harani Joshua doing? What was pharmacist Joshua doing? They were on the ground, dealing with issues. That does not make Joshua less spiritual, but there is an intercession. Oh God Almighty, Jesus up till today, he's seated in heaven, he's not doing anything. No, he ever lives to make intercession for us. So anytime we pray, Jesus prays in us. He's still praying for us because we need it. We need that constant, continued intercession that can defy every fiery darts of the enemy, you know, to activate our shield of faith. There must be somebody somewhere, trusted, not uh, legislated, not, uh, let, me, let me rent a father, let me pay you some money to be praying for. You have access to your God, direct access. But there must be somebody somewhere always interceding for you against every arrow of the enemy. We lost James in chapter 12 of Act of the Apostles. Oh my God, I know the mother went to Jesus. They said, oh, I need a place for my two sons. I need a place for them. Jesus said, can you drink of, it, of the cup? He said, I'll drink it. And the mother bought, maybe they are dead. And James the Apostle, oh my goodness, he died. But the church picked it up because he's going for Peter. He's coming for Peter. Now, do you want to tell me James don't know Psalms 91? You want to tell me James don't know Ephesians 3? You want to tell me James don't know Ephesians chapter 6? That was why I asked Annette all those questions. He knew all those scriptures. He must have quoted those scriptures. No evil shall be for me. You know, uh, you know, no place shall come near my dwelling place. I shall live and not die. You know, I dwell in the, all that. Well, he died. Herod killed him. Herod killed him. John the Baptist. The greatest of all the Old Testament prophet. His head was a barbecue to the covens of witches. A young girl was dancing. He was dead. But when it comes to Peter, oh, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to save thee. But I've prayed for thee. Not that you should escape, but that your faith should not fail. Because three, three, three things you need. All of us need these three things. Faith, hope, and love. Don't let anything happen to your faith. You can't please God without it. Hope for great things in your future and love God. Oh my God, eyes have not seen, ears have not had. Not, so, so Dr. Michael picked that up. When he say it's a calling. So the better dress for that word is a love. When you love God and he placed the love of humanity in your heart, not because you want to be paid, just because you love God as an Israel. Israel of God. Hear, O Israel. The Lord your God is one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. With all, now if I love God with all my heart, what else do I have to love something else? My heart is gone with every fiber of my being. Only God can position his love in your heart because it's shed abroad in the heart by the Holy Ghost. It's not something you can, only God can plant. He said, he didn't give us the spirit of fear. Love is the spirit. We put it in, and that's God. Because God is love. Love is not feelings. It can be expressed as feelings. It's not emotional. Yes, we, emo we have emotions. God is love. So when you have God on your inside, I'll tell you something. What shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus? So I see you as Joshua. Joshua to the nation, Joshua in your hospital, Joshua that is giving people their inheritance of healing, of deliverance, and many are coming home who already have appointment with death and destruction, and they are thank and without you knowing it, remember the shadows of Peter, the shadow of Peter, his shadow, and Ned said that very well, his literal shadow was healing. Maybe he went to McDonald's, he didn't know, and the sun beamed on him, and a shadow, just cast on people and he was healed. That is what God will do in these last days. Nobody will take the glory. But remember, James was killed. 
Peter was arrested. The church was praying. They were praying without ceasing. No! Oh, you can't have Peter the way you have James. No! Peter is a pillar. No, we won't let you. We won't let you. Do you have somebody like that that's praying for you? Corporate God. Real intercession. Moses was on the mountain. He was interceding. And Joshua was winning. And Joshua won the battle. You know, the battle is not ours. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we have a job to do. Watch and pray. Watch your back. Watch with Jesus. Watch. Watch corporately. Corporate prayer. Corporate. Corporate. Corporate prayer. Corporate prayer. Corporate prayer. Two shall put 10,000 to fly. How about three? How about four? Don't let's, don't let's break ranks. You know, these are, these, are, these are spiritual strategy. How about when we are five? How about when we are ten? You know, the critical mass of people that are really praying to God in the nations, especially in America, is not much. We have a, we have a whole lot of people that call themselves Christians, but we don't have critical mass that can cause damage to the kingdom of darkness. Those who are really doing the job, we, we speak politically, we talk about it, we say all kinds of things, we all gather, we do stuff, but real people interceding. Oh, Jesus was on the Gethsemane. When he prayed, his skin, epithelial layer of his foreskin were literally busting. All those vessels were busting. And he, was, and he, he wasn't doing that for himself. He, he didn't need to see, he was doing it for all of us. So I believe very strongly in these last days for you that you are authentic, for you that you are standing on the line, that for you, you know, if, 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 if somebody else, the devil has them, it's, they are chickens, or you are the light of the world. So if the devil is looking for anybody at all, who is he going to look for? Well, he can't get you because you are powerful. Oh, he can get somebody that's less spiritual in your family. So why am I saying this? He cannot do it. Why? Because you are knowing it. Dr. Michael talks about knowledge. Now you're having that knowledge that, oh yeah, I need something covering. Oh, the ball game is changing. I'm delving deep. Go and read Songs of Solomon in chapter five, when that guy was going into, into some debt, you know, the king, uh, the, the Solomon was going into some debt and leopards are coming up. All those whatever I say now I need to, I need to, um, uh, I just kind of phrase it. I need to widen my horizon in the mountain that I have because this is a mountain of praying. So I'm praying for all of us by virtue of this meeting that God will keep us to preserve us. We have delivered from fear. You know, and there's no fear in love. Perfect love cast out all fear. Thank you everybody for your time. Thank you for your calling, expertise. You're a gift unto us, a son not a child, a son is given. You're a gift anywhere you find yourself. And I'm praying that God will perfect everything that concerns you. I'm praying that, uh, you know, uh, as, the, as led by the Holy Spirit, you know, by the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we'll work together to do great things to the kingdom of God, you know, to, to, uh, to not just talk about it, to not just be emotional about it, to not just, you know, we gotta step out like Nehemiah, you know, Nehemiah did something. We got to do something. It's time for us to step out and just do something. And please don't think what you're doing is little. You're making a significant difference. And God bless you. If you allow me, please let us pray. Father, we thank you. We are extremely grateful for this wonderful meeting. Oh, God Almighty. We bless you. We bless you for this network. We thank you all the way that... That, that, that her sister really blessed me. Nearer my God to thee, nearer to thee. That's what we need now. Jesus, thank you for this pandemic. I know I sound crazy. How can I thank God for pandemic? Ah, if not for pandemic, we will have thought until we get to the building. Many of us, we have substituted Jesus for the building. Ah! I will build my church. It's a people that God is laying the foundation upon jesus upon apostles and prophets who are the apostles the apostle is talking about matthew to revelation they wrote it he's not a man the prophet who are the prophet is talking about um, uh, genesis to malachi the word is the apostles and the prophet 
laying the foundation on the word. The Bible says, when we build on that word, doing it, he said, we cannot be moved by the storm, we cannot be moved by the wind, we cannot be moved by the rain of darkness. I thank you for all your children here. Lord Jesus, please perfect them. Many of them, they need you. Many of them, the enemy has gone behind to attack their marriage, to attack their emotional life, to attack their love life. Some of them, yes, they have faith, but sometimes occasionally. Peter also, he was tempted. He told Jesus, I don't know him, three times because of his relationship with the Holy Ghost. But when the Holy Ghost descended, he stood up and defended Jesus. Lord Jesus, grace for your children to stand up, please give it to them. As many as are led by the Spirit, not led by our this, not led by a man, not led by what we feel, what we think, led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Help all of us to be led by your Spirit. Help us to uh, be a global impact in our world. Thank you for all of our panelists. What can we give them? But just to thank you for this wisdom, wealth of wisdom, and for those who, who uh, charted, and for all of those input, we are very grateful. Lord, in your will, if we should hold this meeting again, please gather us together one more time. And Lord, if there should be any connection, network, or strategizing, or snagizing that should come after this, Holy Spirit, please lead us. Breathe into us. Speak to our mind. Teach us to love you. And we just appreciate you. And we are going to close with this. One thing have I desire of the Lord. That will I seek after. That let me dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And Mary has chosen that one thing which shall not be taken away from me. And one thing I do, forgetting things behind and pressing forward to the things I am. Take all the glory for one thing. You are the one thing. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Thing. I want to tell you, Dr. Michael, Dr. Benjamin, Dr. Annette, and all the other guys, I'm telling you we're very grateful. South Korea, from Indonesia, from UK, everybody, thank you very, very much. I thank God for that, my daughter, that uh, uh, was uh, a bridge to get all this, all of us connected. I'm hoping that in your very, very busy, 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 busy schedule, we're going to have this meeting again, and it's going to be more of prayers pray maybe one hour 30 minutes just to you know all of us come together and we all pray you know people have prayer requests come in let's pray before the lord you know um and just and just trust the lord and i i commit everybody's week to the hands of god the rest of the month the rest of the year we are not going to hear any bad news i can tell you this because because god is with us in him we live move and have our being and thank you and thank you and thank you and god bless you richly if there's anybody that has any challenge you know emotional family whatever it is uh you know uh, any challenge that you have at all i believe god almighty is moving in and he's going to sort you out and he's going to heal you and he's going to touch you we sent his word to heal to deliver from all destruction the word has been sent it will not return to us void god bless you richly and I really do love you. Thank you so much.